Hello, hello, hello. Here we are to go over the exercises of week two of our training plan. You have to know, um, Roberto and Omar, we met on Thursday, but I had difficulties, technical difficulties, and I couldn't use the footage. But just know they did hurt now. They, we had a good session. We reviewed the games. This is a short video to provide you with the answers because, um, I mean, you have to know the answers. So here we go. First exercises, this is from day one. F first exercise from day one, it's the white pieces to move. You were supposed to, if I go to the training plan, you were supposed to spend on this one 10 minutes. Now, Roberto and Omar found it very to be very easy. And of course, feel free, even if you're not following that training plan, feel free to pause the video every time I go to a new exercise, work on it for a few minutes, and then listen to my answer. The answer on this one was realizing I'm putting pressure on that knight, and the only defender is the bishop. So can I eliminate the bishop? Can I deflect the bishop? Can I obstruct the bishop? And the answer to that is, well, I could do something like pawn to g4, trying to make the bishop um, go away, and then I get the, the knight. But of course, if you just go g4, they simply take it, and you did nothing. So instead, we go pawn to e6. And if they take with the bishop, well, we eliminate it. And then the knight is going to be hanging on e6. If instead, after e6, they take with the pawn, well, the bishop is already blocked. So we can go ahead and collect the knight. As simple as that, pawn to e6. I really appreciate if you let me know in the comments, those of you who did it, um, how long it took you. I put 10 minutes. Because I really want you to take a moment, try to understand what's going on. But maybe you did it way faster than 10 minutes. So again, if they take, give me that. Whatever they take with, give me the knight. And if they had taken with the pawn, well, give me the knight anyways. So that was exercise number one. Exercise number two. Um, this was supposed to be about positional, if I remember Correctly, yeah. So this is a positional exercise. After you take your break here, we get to this one, evaluate the position. And the main thing in your evaluation besides pawn structure and everything else is you got only one open file on the board, right? So that's the D file. And the white pieces are the ones controlling it with the rug. So, and not only that, we have like five pieces, five good pieces, knights, bishops, rooks, queens on the board, and that's going to give us an edge to attack. So, of course, the, the first move that comes to mind has to be something like knight c4, just trying to put pressure on, on the knight that is pinned, but you have to really consider what, how can they respond. If you go knight c4, you're pinning that knight, and Roberto, I think he, he only considered, oh, they could play rook e6. And then I could add more pressure on a3, which is excellent. This adding more pressure to the pin piece makes perfect sense. However, you also have to consider after knight c4, they could simply take you because they're hitting the queen. So you really have to be okay with that. Now, after knight c4, rook e6, queen a3, we're already in good shape, putting more pressure, hitting a7. So we do like this. And if knight c4, the best move is actually, or what they give, is queen takes knight. I'm ready to give you some checks here. This guy's in trouble. This guy's in trouble. If they take, well, give me that queen on d7. And now, even though I did not win material, this is a very powerful rook on the seventh rank. And that's why this is a positional um, position, uh, a positional exercise. You're supposed to. Um, calculate this far and then see if you improved your position by going into this variation. Now, the one line that we discussed, I think it was Omar who mentioned this line was, okay, what if I just take on d7 right away? And then after they go, I take on b7. Um, the problem is that we dropped a piece, right? So that's the main problem with that. Uh, and I think when we talked about this in our meeting, we didn't really realized that we had dropped <laughs> we had dropped the knight here omar we we got up we got to get better I, I not even i realized that so that's why after we drop a knight here we get it right back and then 
only now we get the rook to the seventh rank. That's it. Now, after something like knight d6, well, the same thing. The knight is defending the b7, the seventh rank. I'm going to eliminate that defender. Can I add more pressure to it to eliminate it? Can I eliminate it right now? Can I um, deflect it? So rook d1, then if they go something like rook e6, feel free to pause the video here and think, I've, I have improved my position already. They have to be very uncomfortable. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't think this is good for, for them. Those pieces tied up. How can I continue? How can I take advantage of this situation? I have to tell you, both Omar and Roberto... No, I think Roberto found the move here. Uh, and he found it very quickly, actually. The move is, I already have two of my pieces very, very active. I need to incorporate the bishop. So, e4 was the move. If they take with the pawn... Bishop h3, rook is going to be lost, or the knight is going to be lost. If instead they took with the knight, well, you're going to have rook b7. Let's say they do this, check, rook d7, you take, and then of course um, you could take on a7 right away, or they suggest don't give your opponent any counterplay, just take and collect on a7. Now, they could try something like e3. And there's a very interesting move that they give, which is instead of taking, just bring the king over. If they advance, well, I just get in front of the pawn. End of story. If they take, well, I already got a protected pass pawn. Uh, my king is going to get active. You get a very nice position. But we definitely improved our position and we got into a winning end game for, for white. Now, we got only two more. Next one is a very complicated one, and here, uh, Roberto didn't see this one, so he didn't work on it. Omar worked on it, but he did not get it correct. However, what I always tell my students is, if you spend, I think this one was supposed to be 12 minutes, yeah, so if you spend 12 minutes on this, you already calculated, you visualized. Even if it's nonsense, you exercised that. Now, the main thing here to realize is both of my knights are being attacked. Even if I move this one, they're going to take me on h5, open up. This is just not cool. Those of you who play the Sicilian, this is from a Sicilian game. Thematic idea of sacrificing the rook on c3 to expose the king, and then we go after it. Now, how do we continue? Well, you got to think of moves like queen a1 with check. But the problem is, the moment you do that, the king can leave. So the question is, how can I prevent that king from leaving? Well, you could think of knight c4, and then you've, you threaten in checkmate one move, right? So that in itself is very interesting. Knight c4, bishop takes, queen takes, you're not going to capture my knight anymore. Still, it's going to be very uncomfortable. They have f5. It's not going to be nice to be the black pieces, right? Well, the move that they actually played here. It's a very powerful move. Also comes from realizing this would be made if d2 were covered. So the move is <clears throat> the move is knight f6. And now if you take me, thank you for this, because I'm hitting the queen and I'm controlling the d2 square. So either give me the queen or you get checkmated, right? Now, <clears throat> in the game, they played bishop d3, and then we have the powerful knight to e4 and again i'm hitting that queen i'm ready to checkmate you on a1 if you take then i got knight to c4 it's all about blocking that escape uh, escape square and then here if they do something like i don't know knight b3 well you got queen b2 and the game is yours and again this one i know is more complex but even if you do it halfway even if you only calculate nonsense we're still making progress. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Now, next one. Um, this is actually the simplest. Um, well, not the simplest, but let me see. This one we were supposed to spend like 12 minutes as well. In this one, Roberto was saying, well, I found knight h7, rook takes, bishop takes, and it's a pretty cool pattern. But we talked about how he has to consider this rook blocking on f7. And even if you take it, you gave two pieces for the rook and the pawn, and we know it cannot be, uh, most of the time it's not the way to go, right? 
So instead, all that we needed to do here was, and Omar got this one right, take that, they take back, and then give me that on e6. That's it. If you take me, queen takes, that king is in the center, in trouble, and I'm up upon uh, on top of it all. So this is what we were looking in this in this position. Now the last exercise is actually a more complex one, but I like it so much because if you're not that advanced, well, you could have you could have some fun with this one. If you're way more advanced, you still have material here to to have fun. Now the move here, and I put this exercise specifically because I know the way we think at this at this stage that you are. The move was actually pawn to f4. Now, I knew you were going to do what Omar and Roberto did, which is, oh, no, 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 but wait, I dropped the pawn with check. It cannot be. And then you start looking for other things, other things. However, as you go through these in training, in your games, you're going to get to the point where I got, which is, which is don't just stop because it's counterintuitive. Really update the image in your head, visualize it, and only then you give it up if you don't like it, right? But the point is, with f4, if you take and I move, now if you really visualize this, if you take a moment, you're going to realize the queen is trapped. The queen is trapped. Like I'm threatening to just go rook f3 and that queen has nowhere to go. I think the computer was giving something like knight b6, rook f3, um, bishop g4, rook takes, bishop takes, knight d1, and we still continue to, to defend. So at least we get the piece, right? Even if it's not the queen um, entirely. Now, if uh, instead they move the queen, let's say, to d6, now this is for the more advanced students, they will have to think, well, now that the queen is gone, I could go check, then queen b3, check, and I'm going to be entering with the knight. Like if you go here, then knight e6, be careful with getting on this diagonal. If you go to e8, then I bring more pieces into the attack. So this is definitely more, more, more advanced. They have, there is another variation where they go over here, check, they go to h6, and I think it was rook lift. Yeah, rook lift, and I'm going to checkmate you over here. You have to take the knight, or if you try to open up escape, check, only move, then f5, again, be careful with going to f7. When you take on f5, rook h6, and I'm threatening checkmate, um, on the next move anyways I know very complex I'm not I'm not even going into in detail here because I know I'd, I'm not expecting you guys following this to have even considered it but uh, it was there in case in case one <laughs> any masters are doing this they had they had content there so there you have it main move I was looking for was f4 and for you to consider this not be like oh I dropped the pawn it cannot be it and then really appreciate this position even rookie one ideas after were really, really powerful. So there you go. I'm sorry I couldn't show you the footage with Roberto and Omar, but they got their share of me being annoying and asking silly questions, uh, and you get your answers right here. Let me know in the comments more or less how long it took you per exercise. If you're finding them too difficult, because that's the first thing I asked them, they were really happy with the difficulty level, but maybe you're like, you know what? You're giving me things that I cannot even begin to understand. So please let me know in the comments and I could add certain exercises that um, that could be uh, a good fit for you as well. Um, week number three, let me actually go here. Week number three, you're going to start by doing some mates in one. Enjoy that. That's a very cool website, by the way. Um, you're going to have, this is going to be probably difficult for some of you, but analyze or study your own games ideally from tournaments over the board if not go into the 15 tens that you've been playing if not go over whatever games you've played but do it carefully slowly really analyze it do it first on your own without any computer help or coach then you could compare the, your notes to what the computer says and so on you got some positional exercise optional for you to play some five fives at the end if you have some time um tactics you have a video from my youtube channel don't be like oh i probably already saw it even if you saw it go over it again every time i read a book a second a third time i learn something new just give it a try it's like 23 24 minutes 
So end game, <clears throat> this end game very interesting. Have fun with it. Um, here you have a lot of tactics: Mason four, Mason fives. Write down your answers, but don't look at the solutions yet. Don't activate the computer. You see it later when you see my video. Okay. Um, and that's it. Openings, review openings, uh, review the answers to exercises number four on a separate day. So I think we're good. I think we're good to go. So have fun. I will see you in our next video.